You saw it excellent. <laughs> oh fuck that is classic. Give me one of these. <laughs> classic. After middle, or oh, welcome. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Lectures for the final race of the 2023 ICF Canoe Marathon World Champs. I'm Dave McLeod. It's going to be a spicy session. We are in the land of the Vikings. With me is Ivan Lawler, who has decided to go properly Viking on the final session. That is going to pose certain challenges in terms of getting him into the headset because this is Lawler ready are, for the final session. So I, I don't quite know how we're going to get the the headset on here yeah, but this is going to be a bit spicy but this is the viking way of that could kind of work sword, i think oh my word so let's have a look at the scene at lake gels and the final session of the afternoon of course an interesting development in terms of medal tables and uh, the way that the nation's competition is working. So always a great deal of animation uh, about that. But let's have a look at what we can expect. Let's take you through the course here at Lake Yells from the start. That start gantry is going to take you up to a full lap of Lake Yells, which is about three and a half kilometers down to the finish. You turn around those Christmas decorations there, and then you head back up for a second lap. It's on the second lap that you come all the way back down, exactly the same way as the first lap, the difference being is you turn into the portage. Portage out on the jetty, in on the jetty, out on the beach, and then you go back up exactly the same way. And in this case, it's going to be seven laps like that. You come into the portage, and then the spicy bit, the last portage, you go 500 meters up to the top turn, boys, you turn down, and with the crowd screaming in the background, your finish is round about there. That's what you can expect. The total race distance for this men's K2 race is 27,6 kilometers. 
uh, and it promises to be an absolute belter of a showdown. The way the medal table looks right now, <coughs> Spain hounding Hungary. Spain got 16, seven of them gold. Uh, sorry, Spain has got 14, five of them gold, but Hungary are leading the table. 16, seven of them gold, four silver, five bronze. Argentina, Ukraine, Denmark, South Africa, Sweden, Portugal. It could still be spicy this afternoon. I think we've got a couple of chances for Spain and Hungary to get medals this afternoon. So they've both got strong crews in the next race and uh, it could make a difference. With only one race to go, it's hard to see how Hungary will be caught. So as the paddlers warm up below the start line, there's Hungarian crew in shot. That's Cornel Becky and Tamás Kulifai. In the distance there, the Swiss. Probably not two of the bigger names in the event, but it's some event for them to be in. 5-3-3 three, three there. Philip Knudsen, who we saw really dominate the under-23 race before he was overtaken in the closing stages, and he's with Soren Moretti. So just a quick uh, public service announcement as we appeal to the athletes who have to present themselves to the K2 Women's Medal Ceremony, which will take place straight after the start of this race by the Kisli, Inez Kohami, Fernandez Alvarez of Spain, and Rugasi and Jebe. Please, can you present yourselves right now to the medal ceremony holding area? Thanks, sir. The Argentinians, the two Garrick cheers there. You've seen how strong the Argentinians have been through this championship. And we'd expect them to be up there in the lead group <coughs> for a majority of this race. And maybe even challenging at the end. There's the world champions right there. Romalo and Pimenta, a great mixture there. Intelligent driver and a huge powerhouse in the back. Experience from both members of that crew. And they were so dominant last year, it's, uh, it's going to be hard to beat them. Second Danish crew there, Karl Hinger and Thorben Rask. Thorben Rask already raced in the under-23 K1s. I think even by his standards, he, he would say that that was a disappointing result for him in that one. So he's got something to prove in this this afternoon. He's a great driver. And he just needs to throw a good race together to put himself in the picture. The Swiss boat of Tim Muller and Mauro Zulik in the background, passing in front of the Danes. So let's have a look at that full start list, Ivan. So here we go. Jacobs and Bula from, Spool from Bool. South Africa. Clinton Cook and Hamish Lovemore also from South Africa. Lining up next to the two Spaniards. So that's a strong group there. Fifth boat down, Max Hoff and Alex Heilinger. Mm. Max Hoff transferring from sprint. It'll be interesting to see how they get on. Suji and Kondo from Japan. Beke and Kulify from Hungary. Moretti and Knudsen we've already seen from Denmark. They're going to be there, so there or thereabouts. On the second page, we've got even more. Brook and Saxvik from Norway, Urban and Candy, one of the real big players. Mm -hmm. Everything from a turn of speed to savvy race management and good portage in. Combi and Allen from Italy, Johnson and McIntyre from Great Britain, mm -hmm. Furligoy and Vitor from Italy, Muller and Zulig from Switzerland, Rask and Hinger from Denmark, Longwood and Weyers from Australia. Joachim Lindberg, we normally see him in the K2, and Martin Nathal. They're going to be a strong crew from Sweden, another good driver, another good engine. Cuevas and Cole from Australia. Romalo and Pimenta, there's your big guns from Portugal. Next to them, Vold and Vold, who raced so unconventionally last year to a great result. The Gary Cachillas next to them from Argentina. Boros now racing with last year's junior world champion, Bruno Colosvari. Vergorven and Feju from Argentina. And on the outside, Russell and Shaw from Great Britain. So the big names lined up together. On the far side, you've got the South Africans and the Spanish. And on this side, you've got the Portuguese and the Norwegians and the Hungarians, Boros and Kolosvari. So it's going to be, like we've seen many times this week, 
two groups forming to start with and then having to blend probably about three, four hundred metres up the course. So, yep, the big news, I guess, or the big uh, surprise is that Max Hoff has come and given this a go. Hats off to him for that. It's a very different type of race than the one they're used to. Max has obviously done some 5Ks and got some very good results in 5Ks. But that doesn't include as much rough and tumble as this. And it doesn't include the portages, or it didn't back then at least. That's another discussion. Max but, uh, also a wild water international. So he has the boat skills. He's got he's got a full package there. But there's your world champions, Romalo and Pimenta. And a lot of the clever money is on those two for a repeat victory this weekend. Relatively small field. But high quality. I think that front group of about eight boats maybe will be away and clear after the first portage. Starter is calling him down to the start line. It is time. With the conditions here at Lake Gels, the uh, westerly wind is still blowing. It's overcast. It's cool, pleasantly cool. The wind moderate from the west at the paddlers' backs as they leave the start line. Australian Longwood and Bayers there. <coughs> this should be a great contest to bring so down the curtain on. We're the looking event. at six boats up in the yellow cap. I think next to that red boat there, they will be the fastest away. And there they go. It's game on. Good start from the Argentinians at the bottom. So it is Romalo and Pimenta in shot, leading the charge. The Volds next to them. They're going to be safe on their right-hand side. They'll drop back once they know it's safe. A little bit of contact just behind them. Ooh. The Australians going so sideways. Australians and yeah, it's contact in the other group as well with the red boat out there. More contact as the red boat goes right. That's the second Norwegian crew. They're all over the shop. Rask, you can see they're trying to get into the V. There's contact with him as well. Oh. But he's getting there. That's the two <laughs> Argentinians <laughs> impacting each other and now veering off to the left. Things are beginning to settle. Well, quite unlike the junior boys race, everybody's still in their craft. <coughs> no casualties. That's so the good news. Bold and Vold, Moretti and Knudsen picking up the early prizes to the left of the lead boat. In the back there, the French, Candy, and Urban. Hamish Lovemore, the under-23 champ from last year in the boat with Clinton Cook. You can see in the background, Hamish with <coughs> the cap, white cap on backwards. That's the blue boat, third back on the left-hand side. The other South Africans outside them is Jacobs and Bull, I think. And a big bunch all together. Norwegians, the Volds. Out of the box style of paddlers. Which means you have to watch them like a hawk. There you go, the South Africans trying to shake things up a little bit. It's a solid effort. Danes go to their left to protect. Portugal go right, and it's going to be a head-to-head. -head. Doesn't really matter. The Portuguese are hoping the Danes make it, and they'll move over to the left, and the French will slit, sit back onto that V again. Bold stuck. Second washout at the moment. That's the second South African boat, the navy blue one that's tucking in behind Hamish Lovemore and Clinton Cook. So Knudsen at the front as he enjoyed so much time. 
at the front of the under 23 K1s and behind him the groups gradually building in the yellow boat bottom of your screen James Russell and Luke Shaw Argentina outside and behind them dark blue boat of South Africa dives into a V wash Italians up there also Australians not in the group they're sort of weaving about randomly behind that group there's a big gap between them and the main group two Hungarians there Hungary not helpfully wearing a black sort of drinks vest which makes them look a little bit South African and Russell and Shaw just being squeezed in by the Argentinians Beautiful group shot there. It's going to be fairly safe around this boy, I would think. A little bit tight for some of the boats on the outside. Well, very tight for some of the boats on the outside. Grey boat at the back of the group having to come in at a bit of an angle. Just clipping the blue boat there. Not and out to the right come the second Argentinian crew. Portugal lead. Through come the Volds on their right hand side. Portugal just drift across. And I'm not sure if the Danes will try and challenge them for that. Yes, the Danes move up just a little and that squeezes the Portuguese forward again. France will just duck back behind the Portuguese and there's a little bit of contact out to the left. South Africans just going hard to get off the front of their dark blue boat of their compatriots. And coming in at a bit of a tight angle, squeezing the Danes into the V. Danes drop back, well managed and well managed by the French who had very little time to respond to that. French now running into the Danes and that gap opens up behind the Volds temporarily. Ladies and gentlemen, we now turn our attention to the medal ceremony for K2 women. A drift across to a medal ceremony. Uh, hopefully we don't miss too much action. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the medalists for the K2 women. These medals will be presented by Ulla Pedersen, the Danish Canoe Federation event manager, and assisted by Andras Faludi of Team Hungary. The bronze medal representing Hungary, Silla Rogasi and Pana Cepe. The silver medal representing Spain, Tania Fernandez and Tania Alvarez. And the gold medals and the world champions representing Hungary, Vanda Kisli, Ms. Kolhalmi.
Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Hungary. Congratulations to our women's K2 medal winners. Thanks one again to the dignitaries who have been on duty for the medal ceremony. This big men's K2 front bunch is coming down on the opposite end of Lake Yels. waiting for one of the special awards to be given out before we go back to the senior men's K2. From the medal ceremony for the women's K2, we now go to the presentation of a very special award, the Jorn Kronberg Award. And I'm going to invite the ICF board member and chairman of the ICF Marathon Committee, Ruud Heisler, to come to the podium to make the presentation for this very special award, the Jorn Kronberg Award.
Ladies and gentlemen, as the athletes pass us, cast your eyes to the podium. The Jorn Kronberg Award recognizes an athlete, coach, team support member, organizer, official, or volunteer who possesses and demonstrates integrity, good sportsmanship, and displays the utmost respect for the sport during the events. Just like Jorn Kronberg was, the recipient of this award will be known for his or her dedication to preserving the integrity of canoe marathon sport. Ruud Hasselaar is on the stage and is proud to present this award in 2023 to Lau Larsen. Congratulations, Lau Larsen, recipient of the Jorn Kronberg Award. Congratulations, Lau, once again for a long-standing commitment to the development of the marathon discipline here in Denmark. Good time, Ivan Lola, to catch up with what is happening at the front of the men's race as a huge bunch went past at the completion of the first full lap. Exactly that, Dave. It's hard to tell what's been happening, but the group remains pretty solid. I think probably the two notable absentees from that group was um, the Danish crew of Rask and Hinger. They seem to be off the back along with the second Hungarian crew of Keke, Beke and Kulifan, both out of touch with this front group. We've got two Argentinians, two, uh, maybe only one Great Britain now. It's all aggro in there. That was Norway and Hungary coming together, and they both lost out to the South Africans. It was superb, superb from the South Africans. That gap opened up because of the contact between the Hungarians and the Norwegians, and South Africans saw an opportunity and went for it. Opportunistic thieving of somebody else's space there. <laughs> they had every right to do it. Norway struggling with their steering in the back of that group at the moment, just wavering left to right. Sitting a long way back. Chase group there with Spain in it. One notable um, episode on the first lap. One crew missed the course marker boy on the way up to the first turn, and that was the Spanish boat of Julian and Martin in boat 528. And when they come round next time for their portage, they will have to sit out a 15 second penalty. They're not in this group though. So in terms of overall race placement, it's gonna make not a lot of difference. So in this front group, try and expand on where we are. Spain, Denmark, Portugal, South Africa, France, Germany, South Africa 2, Norway, Hungary, Great Britain with Johnson and McIntyre, Argentina with Vergorven and Feyu and Garakochea brothers. Then a bit further back from that is Group 2 with Russell and Shaw from Great Britain, Julian and Martin from Spain, Rask and Hinger from Denmark, and Furligoy and Vitor from Italy. All quite tense in there. We've got Romalo and Pimenta sat to the right of the leaders. South Africa in the dark blue boat trying to get round to the front or push the Danes to the front of that group. Danes have just held them off, content to sit on the wash for now. 
some intel on that South African boat, Wayne Jacobs and Brad Bull, who are right up at the sharp end of the moment, stepped in because of Hank McGregor being unable to take the place that he won at the selection event. Wayne Jacobs, uh, one of Hank's regular partners, particularly in river marathons, and uh, n knows the game. Brad Bull really enjoying an opportunity to step into the boat with Wayne. Absolutely no pressure on them. Everything to win, nothing, no, everything to gain, nothing to lose. So I expect them to be pretty uh, footloose and I fancy think, free. This Dave, week. we can go back to the replay for the penalty that was given to boat 528. We'll give you that in a moment. Till then, that group grudge again. Here we go. We're around that turn, boy, for the first time. Everyone to the left of it. Except, there you go, we talked about it earlier in the week. The Spaniards hit it head on and it bounced left instead of right. No, right instead of left even. And that's the finest of fine margins. It's a tough call when you take it on the nose and it kicks the wrong way. Hats off to the boat following because they threw a big right turn to avoid making the same mistake. It was interesting because one of the boats in front of them had hit that boy and pushed it out to the left as they hit it and it was coming back in on its string when the others hit it and it was always going to go that side, I guess. So leaders at the moment flanked by Romalo and the Danish boat with Knudsen and Moretti. Bold's coming through on the inside. Wide exit from the turn, leaving lots of room. The black boat closest to us, potentially Germany, keeps pressing forward. And that's going to have a cost to it sooner or later. But the Vold's very happy with that situation because they have a free ride out there on the left side of the group. A lot of work done by that black boat, only for the others to wait and then push on past them. I think the Vols will try and go round them now. There we go. And squeeze in. Germans catching the back of that grey boat from Denmark. Big move coming up on the right. Germans back out to the right of shot. It's interesting you've got a boat there that's got all the power they need to be in this group but haven't got the background in these marathon races. And they become a real problem to people because they're unpredictable. Nobody knows them. They haven't met them before on these sort of races. And they become a real thorn in your side because you don't know what they're going to do. You know what Romalo's going to do. You've raced him a thousand times. You know what the French are going to do. You know what Boris is going to do. You know who's aggressive, who's not. But that German crew in the black boat to the right of your screen is a newcomer. There's a push up and to the right from the red boat. <coughs> as Boris set that one off. Romalo and Pimenta cover. South Africans at the back of the group currently in the two blue boats. Germany to the left. Agro on the right-hand side in the reeds there. It's the French just getting squeezed against the reeds. Just enough room to come through. Argentina tucked in the V at the moment. Spanish boat of Laurence and Plaza is the white hat, blue deck boat with a lot of stickers on it, just trying to make their way up to the front V, squeezing out the Argentinians. It's a restless group. It's an unusual formation. Nobody more restless than Jacobs and Bull at the back. They've been buzzing around like a, like a mozzie trying to find a place to settle.
Hoff and Heilinger still out to the left of that group. Leaders, this is fairly high speed now. Somebody's protecting something. Boros on the right hand side. No challenge that side. It must have been this side that we couldn't see information coming from the Danes there. Again, the Germans, <laughs> it's non conventional, but. They're going to find it hard if they keep doing the same thing over and over again and it isn't working for them. They're coming in at an angle. It's not going to get any easier for those guys. Pedals down. South Africans sharper to the V than the Germans. Good move. Germans come left again. They're more comfortable out of the group than in the group, I think, those guys. So, Portugal, Hungary to their right, Denmark to their left, Spain in the back, France in the red boat, Argentina in the white boat, Norway in the stripy boat closest to us, and South Africa in the light blue boat. Germans at the back of that group, kind of vaguely on their own there. It's going to be a tough day for the Germans, I think. There's a beautiful space behind the Spanish, open for the German boat. But I just don't think they're up for that sort of uh, positioning. Behind that dark blue boat of the Spaniards is prime territory. But happy for now to be... On the outside of the group, things will get quite tight for them on the turn. So Moretti and Knudsen, so far so good on the left of Pimenta and Romalo. Coming up to the turn boy now. It's going to get a bit tight on this left side of the group. First turn boy in about three seconds. There it is. Front four around tidily. Germans being squeezed back, and here we go. Portugal going strong. Here we go. Germans causing problems at the back for the South Africans. Serious move by the Portuguese. They're still going. And in they come to the portage. First four boats all going. Oh, we've got oh, swimmers we there. It's that's Norway, the, I think. That's Denmark. Uh, Denmark. Denmark in. That's Moretti and Knudsen. Oh, unbelievable. We didn't see what happened to them. I was looking elsewhere at the time. We'll try and get a replay of that after it all calms down again. But Romalo and Pimenta, Colos Vari and Boros and the French all looking super organised, as is Laurence and Miguel from Spain. It's the usual suspects making their way to the front. And I think the Norwegians are in trouble. I think it's the last we'll see of the Germans in this group. Rask running through, not having his best day again. He's had a tough weekend. And the two great British crews just behind. There's the second South Africans. Russell and Shaw getting in now. Just in front of Johnson and McIntyre. The Czechs getting in with them. Down to six. And it's a solid six. South Africans trying to hold off the Spaniards, I think, to the outside. There's your Germans. And if you're the Volds, you rely on a workhorse like that. You think, I'm going to let them get as close as they can, and then I'll do springboard for the rest. Germans won't give up the chase, but it's a long chase. Nice and slow, though, in the front group. Wow. Rask. And Russell. Looking forward to seeing the replay of what happened at that portage. 
congestion down the left hand side and the casualty being the Danes that it all happened in a split second. The replay will be illuminating. Hamish Lovemore goes to the front in the light blue boat. Portugal and France shadowing him. Spanish on his left. See Romalo glance over his shoulder to see if there was space behind him. There isn't yet, so he can't let the French in. He's got to wait. And while he waits, he pushes forward, and the, so the whole thing slows. Australia coming through. Longwood and Veyers. Looking forward to seeing that Portage replay, which is on its way to you shortly. So strap yourselves down. You can try and analyse what happened to the Danes led to that swim. So Danes, third boat at the moment. They're coming left of the Portage, just going over the back of that white boat. The red boat of France comes across. And just like the Danes this morning, not seemingly nothing. There was no paddle contact. There was them. no boat contact. The paddles, the paddles were down. Maybe they were preparing yeah. to get out of the boat and drifting away. It's amazing. Brutal. So either we couldn't see it, or there wasn't any contact. I'm dumbfounded. Maybe run that again if we can. There goes I'll Spain. Laurens and Miguel, maybe reluctant to have the Germans and Norwegians join them. Nobody else seemed to mind. South Africa go left. They'll be coming up the left of the Spaniards. So let's have another look at that and see if we can zoom in. So on here we go. Watch the grey boat next to the red boat. So it was just a bit of paddle contact on the back man that was on... Uh, on the red boat? No, on Knudsen's paddle from... He's thrown his paddles up onto the landing stage. Yeah, it was just a paddle clip, I think. That is such a That's, that's really unlucky because those sort of paddle clips happen often and it's not always that it ends in a swim, but... Yeah. They were at a stage when they were just getting... Denmark have just had a tough day today. Getting ready to stand up in the cockpit and get out. And the Germans and Norwegians back in the group for now. And this game is brutal. You're gone from there. Yeah, there's no way back, is there, from there. So up to the top turn can comes the front group. Still being governed by Romaglio and Pimenta in their bright yellow caps. Easy to spot. So the Vold's just off the back of that group with the Germans, Hoff and Heilinger. Hoff and Heilinger doing a good job so far. Spain, Denmark, Hungary and Norway paddling away from us. So Knudsen and Moretti lost 270 metres. And that's looking at Danish boat there with the second Spaniard. They had a 15-second penalty. So they're stronger than they seem, as in race position. So you've got two strong boats there together who may be able to make some impact. I don't think the Hungarians that are with them will be helping them much. So here's the Spaniards coming in for their penalty. That was for the missed boy on the first lap. One potato, two potato. Just he seems to have wrist problems yeah. as well, or forearm problems. Taking the opportunity to loosen those forearms. God, it's a long way, isn't it? And off they go. So that chase group of four. Russell and Shaw. Jacobs and Bull. Rask and Hinge. And Johnson and McIntyre.
Japanese coming in. I think they also seem to have a time penalty. There was gesturing from the official in the blue jacket. Pretty lackadaisical effort to get the juice on, and I think that is largely because they're heading into the uh, naughty, That's harsh, naughty chair. <sighs> well, there's a basic. The juice system doesn't fit over your cap. That's lack, <laughs> lack of match <laughs> practice. Okay, so France lead now at the top turn. Portugal to their left. Spain to Portugal's left. Portugal lead. Spain follow them up. France drop back, hoping to get on the V. Actually, V appears on the Ooh. other side. Germany coming out to the left and the Volds following them. That will suit the Volds brilliantly. Big move up the right from the South Africans. That won't stick, I don't think. The uh, Argentinians holding them off, which has pushed them to the front. France follow into the newly formed V behind them. Germans finally getting into the back of the group just as the group changes. But it should fall for them. France being squeezed out. Volds running down the edge. If you remember last year, the Volds sat pretty much where they are now for the entire race. And you know, to do that again seems like the sensible option from where they are now. So the race beginning to settle. All of the contenders we expected to be there or thereabouts have put their hand up. Big move coming up on the right against the Reeds. Boros squeezed the French in, no resistance at all. And the South Africans fall back onto the Germans who are out of the way, no harm done. Bold move from Boris and Kolosvari. Some of the athletes in the group you know want to be squeezed back into the V, so they're the ones you pick on first. You only have to gesture that you're moving up and they'll already be on their way back to Easy the V. Target. And I think the French are like that. They like they enjoy it in the back there. And uh, there's somebody you quite like to have on your side of the group. Garakache is apparently very comfortable where they are at the front, taking up the pool. Romalio Pimenta just to their left. Romalio Pimenta look, <coughs> excuse me, extremely relaxed there. Speed is very low. Mm -hmm. No one's stressed here. Laurence Miguel, another of the really well drilled crews. Your three favourites here probably Portugal, Spain, and France. Second group catches up thanks to the drop in speed, and it was the South Africans that made that jump, and Rask back in the game too. Lifeline thrown to them. Two British crews also there, Russell and Shaw. Upping and the pace, Johnson I think they would like to make it as difficult as possible for them to bridge up. <coughs> All change. South Africans move up on the Spaniards through a gap that the Spaniards left. There's your swimmers. It'll be interesting to see. Keep tabs on them for you. And what that does do, it interjects, it injects. They're currently 250 meters behind the leaders. That's not an insurmountable job. They've got the Spaniards with them who took that 15 second penalty. So both those crews are stronger than their position suggests. So there's there's a chance. The Volds seemingly struggling a little bit today. South Africa too on their wave. As the captain says, there's your current world champions, the Yellow Hats of Portugal. 
and there are your three big guns at the front. Change again. Up come the South Africans to take the French out onto the V. No problems. Boros straight round the outside. He's going to join in at the front too. He's going to take the South Africans off the side. What he did there, he came it was such a positive and such an uh, emphatic move Decisive. that the South Africans didn't even offer resistance because they knew they couldn't it's accelerate fast quite enough. Quite a bit of sabre rattling going on now. Spain up with Portugal. Argentina sitting with Spain and the French come up the left-hand side. Volds at the back along with the Germans who are just a bit confused by the rate at which this is changing. South Africa, South going Africa and Argentina fighting for the same wave. South Africa win that one. No loss for either though. South Africans will drop in behind the Portuguese. Argentina behind the Spanish. No, Argentina will drop him back. And going up the other side, but they'll be closed down again by the South Africans. Just clipping the tail of the South African go blue all boat. the way around the outside. That might be the idea. I down they come to the bottom turn, Can. Heading into and the next portage. The next portage. Second group are kind of all in touch. It's all strung out. Can't see it on screen, but we can see it from here. It's an unbroken line through about 12 boats now. So Romaglio Pimenta are going to be leading it into the portage. It's a great chance for that second group to pick off a few people on the portage and to establish themselves in the front group. Red and white boat with Rask. Ooh, yellow boat hitting the boy. We've seen how easy it is for that boy to bounce the wrong way. So here we go. Portugal, Hungary and Spain left. South Africa right. France left. Argentina right. Germany right. Norway left. South Africa right. Here we go. Very slow takeout for the Norwegians. Uh, no, French. Oh, well, they want to get through. The Spaniards want to be let through on the left as they try and take Portugal. There's no way... <laughs> Romano's having through. none of that. The boat will be angled subtly to uh, 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 discourage that. That was that was a and <laughs> you get the message pretty clearly. South Africa closest to us in the blue. Love France in the red. Away they go. All good. Spain with Laurent and Miguel. Germans leaving well. Norwegians behind them. Rask there. Russell and Shaw. And that is a long line. The French making up the back of the five. Uh, oh, you're kidding me. Naughty, naughty chair time for Team GB. Johnson and McIntyre having to stand this one out while the race goes on in front of them. And the speed is high now. Romalo and Pimenta putting it into the other crews now. This is a freebie if you're there. Laurent and Miguel, they'll take over. They're going to go now, and this is a sustained effort to break the group a little. Boros and Colosvari looking super good on the outside. Spain going hard. It's going to be the French who can make their way back to the V, I think. Spanish looking a little ragged, maybe. Strong move from Laurent and Plaza. There's the French. So we've got the big players in the front group. So that's back to five. Four. I think it's going to... It's the South Africans who can make it five, but it's a little way back for them still. Second Norwegian crew. That's Ivar Book and Saiva Saksvik. And we're down to four. So Spain... Okay, so we're going to have a replay, show you why the Great British crew. Whoa, they didn't help their teammates there. Well, well played. Oh, okay. Well played, guys, dropping that boat. Yeah. 
thinking on their feet. This this group is intent. They're rotating that group less than every minute. And every time we see it, it's a different leader. So that front group now has 75 metres on Lovemore and Cook, who are back with Hoff and Hellinger. Heilinger, rather. It's Hoff and Heilinger maybe are the ones that can close the gap. They're kind of the the train that could do that. They've got the power in there, but I think that group is away and gone. Two Australian crews, Swiss crew. And the Italians all working together. 84 metres, the gap back to the second group at the front now. Then there's a group of four with Hoff, Heilinger, Lovemore, Cook, Jacobs, Bull, and the Garrock Achayas, and the Volds. Then it's another 10, 15 metres back to Rask and Hinge. And then there's a little gap back to Russell and Shaw, and then a big gap back to Johnson and McIntyre, who took that 15-second penalty. That chase five is working hard, but you can see that these leaders are really flooring it and they are driving a wedge between themselves and the rest of this field. Two South Africans in that chase pack. That gives you a bit of hope that they could work together. I think the Germans have done their bit now. Vold's in that group there. Russell and Shaw just trying to get back in contact with that group. There's your leaders, though. It's Romano Pimenta, Laurent and Plaza from Spain, Boros and Colosvari from Hungary, and Urban and Candy from France. They're still rotating the group. It'll be a well-organized rotation. Hungarians go up, give the Portuguese a rest. They've just done their work. You see that from behind and you get scared because there's clearly intent to break away and yeah. put a chunk of space. There's not much you can do about that. Four boats of that quality. They are the four you'd have picked for your potential medalists from the start. And now they're all away together. They've got nothing to lose. They'll do a couple of laps like this before it starts to get a bit more cat and mouse as they try and decide who gets what at the finish. So just past the, the halfway point in the race. Just gone through the 45-minute mark. Round it goes again. They're doing the rotation so that the leader falls back into the V-Wash, which means that leader can afford to overstretch themselves knowing that they've got a rest coming. And that's the difference. A leader that can overwork can pull out another few seconds, another few metres. The, the gap opened up to 106 metres now. That's 20 metres more than it was last time we spoke. So these group would appear to be away and clear. Around the top turn. Who would be calling the shots there in terms of the rotation of the pool? No one. They all know exactly what's happening here. Minute apiece. Yeah, it looks even less, actually, which means they're really going for it. Every time the leader appears to be dropping back to the V, the other boats just go comfortably round them. And the new leader sets off. That's a group on a mission. Great view to get as they come around the corner here, but it's... So that's a chase pack there. It's a view to disregard because the lens angle completely distorts the reality of the distance between the groups. That's the Volds, the Garakachayas, and the two South African crews. The leaders to the left there with France at the moment. Trying to capitalise on that outside wave wisely. They're doing, they're doing okay, that second group. I'm just trying to get... 
They've closed up to 80 metres again. They are. So now that front group starting to soften. So there is hope for the two South Africans. They it's, are it's catching a, It's them. a good working group, actually. You've got two South Africans, the Norwegians, and the Argentinians. It's a solid group. You can see how you can see the dark and light stripes of the waves. That's that rolling and wide they're, wave. They're rolling on down those waves and they're managing the job well. There's potential that that group could reform. We've lost the intensity at the front. I'm not sure ever how oh. accurate the speed stats Romagna are. Pimenta. Almost at a standstill, their paddles down as they wait to drop back. Front group really traveling around. And that's yeah. a sniff of blood in the water for the four chasers. You can imagine that can only serve so as is if, you, if you don't catch them while they're in one of these slow periods and it all kicks off again, yeah. you're in a lot of trouble. Having burnt matches to get that close. So France, closest to us in red, Spain in blue, Hungary in white on the far side, and the distinctive yellow caps of Portugal in the back. Pimenta just checking over his shoulder, see what the deal is. Carlos Fari doing the same, and Plaza doing the same. Everyone just checking out what the deal is at the moment, seeing how much work. I think the Spanish just asking the Hungarians to do their bit. Or maybe just a different communication altogether. There's your three groups. Third group being led by the Germans. And that's with Russell and Shaw and Rask and Hinger. That big chase group in the distance contains... Julian and Martin from Spain and Moretti and Knudsen from Denmark. They're about 360 metres behind at the moment, but that's a good group. They've still got potential to close down some of these middle groups. Hoff and Heilinger still doing the work. The Bolds still doing the work in their group. Seems a bit one-sided. Meanwhile, the front group are churning over and over. There we go. Hungary go. Spain will drop back. Maybe they won't. Ooh. Hungary will drop back into the V as the Portuguese come up. A little bit of a glare there from Romalho as they went past. Have you not read the script, gents? The organization of that group <laughs> has broken down somewhat. It's all suddenly looking a little bit edgy. Second group only 55 metres behind now. So that second group is closing. Or us going wide. That's the coordination. It's still the Volds doing the work, though. South Africa. Now the speed goes up. Hamish Lovemore and Clint Cook. Adding a bit of gas to little effect. Wayne Jacobs and Brad Bull getting ready to go with them, but it was not to be. Gap now fairly consistent at the same 50-ish metres. Portage time with four on the front bunch coming up. They move out into the middle of Yagels to 
Line up the first of the turn, boys. Portugal out front. Hungary on their right, France on their left. As they come around, those boys. Spain sitting pretty at the back. Very little intent being shown coming into this. Spain going Spain right. got the right just to make sure they're safe. Romaglio Pimenta going left. <coughs> Hungary out a very early. A little bit of a wobble from Romaglio at the front, but all the way clean. Some pressure from Hungary now on the Romaglio Pimenta combination. All through, all through at pace. There'll be no change to this group, I suspect. The Volds trying to make up ground. They run well, those boys. Probably on account their legs are longer than most people's torsos including <laughs> and legs included. South Africans struggling at the back there. Big stage for Brad Bull. And the Volds very much gained on that portage and we could have five back in the front group. Russell and Shaw with Rask and Hinger. The Volds bridging is not, the Germans as well. not good news for that chasing group because he was one of the engines there. Um, Lovemore and Cook have managed to stay with them. It's good for them. They get a lift up. The Argentinians look like they might be able to reel them in as well. But under pressure, Jacobs and Bull. The Volts might be pulling away from the South Africans there. Maybe yeah. maybe not. Depends where the waves are. No freebies. They're certainly not waiting for them. Argentina too. This is the Danes and the Spaniards who had a 15-second penalty and a swim with them. Argentina with Vergorven and Great Britain with Johnson and McIntyre. All out together. And the pace drops right back. Hungary too, a long way back now. Back and qualify. And the second Norwegian crew coming through behind them with Book and Saxvik. Lap five of eight full laps. And we're starting to get clear shape at the front of this race. Folds have done 90% of the work in that chase group. Still 30 meters off the pace. Every reason to believe that they will be able to pull the three of them back. So as we run, give you a rundown of who's where. Spain, Portugal, France, Hungary in the first group. Norway, South Africa, Argentina in the second group. Then Denmark, Great Britain, South Africa, Germany. Then we go back to the next group, which has Great Britain, Denmark, Argentina, and Spain. And it's Italy, Hungary, Norway, Italy, and Switzerland. This is Joachim Kevas and Dave Cole <coughs> in the Australian colours at the front of this bunch.
Going around the bottom turn can, getting ready to come into the portage. Leading three other boats. Group we're seeing now just over a thousand meters off the leaders. It's the other Australian boat of Corin Longwood and Stefan Veyers. I say Stefan Veyers because he's an Aussie born in South Africa. Never really paddled for South Africa. Moved to, if I remember correctly, the British Virgin Islands. Might have got a taste of it there. Moved to Oz and then got hooked. One of my favourite jokes, Dave. I don't know much about Switzerland, but the flag's a big plus. Oh, my word. <laughs> Okay, on the off chance that that was going to happen, <laughs> I have I have been afforded a new disciplinary measure for inappropriate humour. Maybe we can get our camera up I here. I think inappropriate is different to bad. No, that was bad. That was shockingly bad. So maybe if we can get our camera going here. One, my good friends at the Viking Village have now lent me a new implement to try and enforce some sort of some sort of discipline here. But this is the tool that we have to use, apparently. Totally impractical. You're never going to get me with that, Imagine Dave. this. It'll take well, one of these and you'll never make a crappy joke away. again. You <laughs> chop your own leg off before you get to me with that. You've got no chance with that. That's a totally impractical weapon. This is this is a beaut. I would run a mile if somebody came at me with this. So you cue. <sighs> Stop the dodgy humour. I have also had licence from the... Chocolate Egg Eaters Society to say any more dips at my eating eggs and I have permission to use the Viking sword. I've actually, no Good. joking, I've got a chocolate egg stuck at the back of my throat. <laughs> and oh, I'm that's just gonna, I'm just going to turn the commentary down for a second. <laughs>
they haven't been working as hard as you've been working. They they are really not that far off. But that, the Argentinians could do the same. I mean, yeah. the, the, they they could just fire the turbos yep. for thirty seconds and they could be on the back of that bunch. Yep, hundred percent. But the the Volts are not lightweight guys, so the wave they're kicking off is probably it's a premium very wave. pleasant. It's a premium yeah. wave. So the group of four untroubled at the front. And there go the Argentinians. They're going to have a... That's what we a thought. South Africans who want to go with them. <coughs> Volts can't see what the fuss is. No, they are toying with going with them. They're all going with the Argentinians. And it has every prospect of working. The South Africans making life a little difficult for the Volts. Squeezing them out, but they just drop quietly onto the back wave. Are getting drawn into the street fight. Very intense looking Hamish Lovemore on the right with Clint Cook. Urban and Candy. Boros and Carlos Vari. Coming into shot, Romaglio Pimenta, Lawrence Plaza. Romal and Pimenta, have they written their names on the side of their boat with a felt pen? Yeah, I think so. I think somebody's lost or their boat stickers. So crayon or something. Pretty much like Mads Pedersen did. I think he <laughs> lost his athlete yeah, number. number. So I think somebody maybe flipped theirs over and wrote it in Koki. So the Argentinians have finished the job nearly that the Volds... They're there to Basically orientate. They've gone for the glory run. The Volts did all the work. There's no sprint, no urgency. They're up there. We're back to seven. No noticeable reaction whatsoever from Romaglio and Pimenta. They do have the capacity to respond instinctively to somebody bridging back onto the grap with a little bluster and flurry. Nothing like that now. This is lap five of eight, which is significant as well, because there's no point in starting an arm wrestle that's not going to achieve anything significant. This is back to Russell and Shaw, about 200 metres behind the leaders. Rask in there also, and Max the Germans. Hoff and Andreas Heilinger. You'll also find Wayne Jacobs and Brad Bull there in the uh, dark blue boat. Speed's gone up, and look who suffers. Actually, Lawrence and Miguel are suffering a little bit there. It's the three boats that did all the work to catch up, just dangling off the back again. There's the diamond. <coughs> It'll all concertina back up. The Vold's looking to get the best of the back three. Straight into the back behind the French. Russell and Shaw leading the charge of the group that's about 200 metres back. The French duo are looking composed and tidy. You've got as we head four the very half. good boats in that front group. It's always a difficult job on the outside to try and assess how they're doing physically. Take you back to Van der Kisley and the... Yeah. The women's K2 race who just said she was flat. She was struggling after her K1 race. No discernible signs of it, so so tricky to read. So here we come. Next portage. Probably the same three will suffer. Romalo has gone left every time. French in the red boat are also going to go left. All four of them are going to go left. Front group going left, second group going right. It's going to get tight. <coughs> Portugal out. Good for the France French. Out. Spain, Everybody's Hungary. Out clean. Argentinians a little bit slow picking the boat up at the back. Two through the drinks lane. Hungarians also through the drinks lane. Little head gesture from Romano saying, this is our don't. See if we can get some space here, but it hasn't worked. They've come through that 
Drinks lane like greased lightning, and they're right back into contact. A grimace on the face of Hamish Lovemore. It's getting intense. Good put in with Clint Cook, and off they go with the Volds. There's a lot of experience in that front group, but you've also got Colos Vari there, just 19 years old, in the back behind Boros. Rask oh. running through. Russell coming through the drinks lane, the Germans there. And the South Africans, Jacobs and Bull. One of those team officials nearly got speared in the drinks lane. I've seen that before. Official a boat in the back of the head. Yeah, not funny. It's at uh, pace. Yeah. And it's funny. This, this is a good group now. The Spanish and the Danes in this group. I think we'll be closing that group down in front. Spain first to enter the water. Great Britain with Johnson McIntyre. They've got a lift up to the next group. If they can just Argentina stay the Argentinians. Go in. Oh, they're in. taking water. Oh. oh but the two the main boat. powerhouses in this group still together. Spain and Denmark. Uh, bother said poo. Look at that. And that's them gone. This is a strong pairing here. And these have got the group in front in their sights. And if the Great British crew with Johnson... And McIntyre can stay with them. It's a freebie. Both the Spaniards, actually all three of these have suffered, haven't they? The Danes swam. The Spaniards had a time penalty. The British crew had a time penalty. So they're all artificially far back. This is a replay of them running through the portage. And it's the Argentinians we're Here watching in oh, and just over. A, just oh, it hurts so much. The and frustration is immense on that. And the mistake was magnified in the K2 because they were both marginally yeah. left of centre yeah. as they put their feet in. Then you've got no price. They don't look like they've emptied the boat fully either. You've pulled each other over yeah. while somebody's pumping like crazy yeah. for the next t 10 minutes. Back at the front. French putting their paddles down. Where... Oh, the South Africans. There's six. Argentina is now on the left of the French now. Lovemore and Cook, 130 metres. They're back. There, that rear shot that shows, shows that they are off the back of that group. They looked uncomfortable on the run. You pointed out Lovemore's face on the run. Hungary and Norway coming through the portage. That's Hungary with Beke and Kulify. And Norway with Book and Saxvik. So Lovemore and Cook, 130 metres off the front group of five, no, six boats now. And not looking terribly interested in burning back on. It's tough. They're in no man's land. The next group yeah. is 80 metres behind them. But it's all going to change back there. I think that, that chase group with uh, Moretti and Knudsen and Julian and Martin will be changing things at the back there fairly shortly. They're only about 70 metres behind the group in front. There's your South Africans. Suboptimal. Nobody to wait to catch from behind. They're going to have to do these hard yards themselves if they want to bridge back. Beautiful wide shot of Lake Yeltsin, this very carefully protected wetland area. Great venue for marathon racing. Other side of town. Sprint into the portage. Australia 
and Italy. Giancomo Combi and Jonathan Allen racing for Italy. Just keeping their nose out of trouble on that crowd control fencing. Only that just. was <laughs> only just squeaky. Australia one and two both on the portage at the same time. Longwood and Vares in and away. Love Moore and Cook now only 10 metres or so in front of the group that was chasing them down with Rask, Hinger, Hoff and Heilinger. Swiss pair stopping for fresh fuel. Fill up the tanks. So this is where it's still going on. Hungary lead from Portugal, France, Spain, Norway and Argentina. All clean around the turn cans. This race very much playing into the hands of Romalo and Pimenta. They're on lap six of eight. Two more full laps to come after this. And it's the Portuguese crew of Romalho and Pimenta who are sitting in the white boat at the front, happy to watch the red boat get in ahead of them. And there in the background, left stranded in no man's land, Hamish Lovemore and Clinton Cook. Pace is pretty high. It's going to make a solo charge for that isolated K2 really difficult. You'll see them coming around the reeds in a few moments' time. Yeah, the vaults are sitting so high up on that wash that the Argentinians are rather going on their outside because the V-wash behind the Portuguese just wasn't forming properly. So that's why that group is such a weird shape now. Nobody really wants to give until they know they've got somewhere safe to drop back to. At the moment, there's nowhere safe to drop back to. So Portugal will end up leading, I think. Spain just bide in their time. They're looking left and right to see if either of those other boats go. That's proper odd. Spain loving this because they've got a nice big double wash between the Fr French and the Portuguese. If they're happy as long as this lasts. A little glance over the shoulder to see what's happening behind. What is happening behind is that only 73 metres behind now again. It's the German, South African and Great British crew along with Rask and Hinge. So that second group catching up and you can see why because look at the body language in that front group. There's literally nothing going on. There is. third group is going to catch the second group that's with uh, uh, Moretti and Knudsen Lovemore Cook Julian Martin that's an that's an interesting group because with Julian and Martin and Moretti and Knudsen there's two strong boats prepared to do some work there Great Britain with them Johnson and McIntyre that's been a proper nice ride for them Back to the group in front. 
Doesn't look like it's been easy though. Julian and Martin applying themselves with some urgency to the matter at hand. So these two groups are going to come together before they all come back to the front group because the front group, this there's so much suits Romalo and Pimenta a race like this. There's absolutely nothing that frightens them in the boats behind them. Urban and Candy, Adrian Boros and Bruno Colosfari, Jose Romagno, Fernando Pimenta. Miguel guys guys in the back, Albert all having Pimenta. a little look. Yeah, there's a lot of looking around. A few there. words to the front man. The front man will decide whether he cares or not. Back man provides the information. Front man decides who cares. <laughs> and it looks to me like no one in this front group cares whether that group catches up or not. The Garica chair is looking around as well. It's only about 20 metres between the two groups now. Third group's already caught up the second group. James Russell trying to bridge that gap. He's, there's a couple of nice spaces only on that front group at the moment. And only the first two people there get them. And it's going to be James Russell. <laughs> Although he's coming Whee! across the front of the Germans quite sharply. <laughs> Pulled that off, but he's just. made it, and the boat out to the right should be the next one in. Should duck in now. There might be competition for that from the Germans. No. The Volds. So yep, the red and white boat ducked into the wave, and now we go. Time to turn James up the Russell, heat in the this kitchen. Is, this is make or break for that yellow boat of Great Britain. <laughs> the red and white boat's out of it. That's Rask. Oh. They've got all sorts of steering problems in there. Garakuche is just off the back. There's a big wave exactly where Russell is now. You just got to stay with it. Let the group slow down. It will in a minute. And then you're back in. Come on, James Russell. Come on, guys. They're so, so close. There's comfort if they get there. There it is behind the Norwegians. They've got to tuck their nose behind the Norwegians. But again, it kicks off on the outside. Oh, it's like half a wave. It's so close now. Track has got a distance of 20 meters between the leaders and the Garaka chairs. And they're just coming into the portage. So around the turn here. That's why they all fell back one slot. And the gap has been bridged by Russell. And sure of Great Britain, and that is phenomenal from them. They're just ahead of the Garaka Chayas, who've been in this front group. Portage time. And this will be a high traffic zone for the next minute. Your race leaders, this Jose Romaglio and Fernando Pimenta, a first in. A little bit more intensity again this time. They've gone from left the Portuguese. every time. Portugal, Hungary, Norway, France, Spain, Great Britain. Great Britain, the only boat going right. That's going to suit them, I think. One, two, three, it's four, five. going to get five a bit busy on left. that left side. Spain going all the way down the landing stage. Everybody out clean and on the road. Nicely done by Spain. Portugal going into the drinking zone. <sighs> Little stumble by the Portuguese, <laughs> Rui Cancio there. It's a close call, but he made it. Both athletes fed. Where's James Everybody's Russell? Everybody's together. There's GB. Being shouted by the Garica chairs. France away, but no intent. It's going to suit the people who have just fallen off. Nobody's going anywhere. You've got about 20 seconds here. James Russell before that group kicks off again. No, going nowhere, that front group. So who's going to make oh, it back? Foot is completely off the gas. Great there. Britain are going to make it back. 
The Danes outside them are going to make it back. And the <laughs> Argentinians. So we've now got a front group of seven again, I think. Nicely done, James Russell. And the pace has come right off. It's going to be someone from the second group that's got to do the leading here. Yeah, I think that's exactly the plan. <coughs> it's, a, it's a tough call. But either Danes or Great Britain crew need to take this on because otherwise all the people they spent all that time leaving behind are going to catch up. Two boats on the top of the screen. Back. One of those two boats at the top of the screen needs to take this on. And it looks like James... Oh, nearly, nearly. Come on, guys. Pimento, Romagna. Denmark, too, at the back of the group there with Rask. They seem to be having steering problems every South time Africa the cutting group in. picks up. And it's slow as... I don't know if we can give you... It's like going through sludge at the moment. Yeah. Pedals down. When it's Jacob's uh, Brad Bull just... You do, you do all right in your K1 in that group. So all coming back together. Now it starts to kick off. Outside of the group, I think it's the... Maybe the Portuguese stirring it up a little. Hungary have got one plan. They're tracking those Portuguese the whole way. Germans off the back of the group. Italy coming into the portage. German's about 50 meters off the pace at the moment. Italians the away. Big losers in the last while. Hamish Lovemore and Clint Cook, as far as the uh, yeah, and South Johnson, Africans Johnson and McIntyre with them. Oh no, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. They're way, they they, way they back. have cascaded down this yep. this field. Just wondering what's going on because they were up for a scrap earlier. Yep. Johnson and McIntyre from Great Britain in no man's land. On their own. Norway coming through with Hungary too. Book and Saxfin. Getting pretty intense in the top group. Average speeds heading up towards the 18 kilometers an hour. Mm. Things have got a little bit more spicy again. McIntyre and Johnson, closest to the camera. The gap between them and the front, 140 metres, and they're on their own. A little glance around from Jose Romaglio. He created a monster by letting them get back on, but I'm sure he's completely confident That's of being able to manage that. German crew on their own, just behind that big group. Going up on the left. And we've lapped the Japanese. Action in the front. That's the Danish crew. Knudsen. Try and force their way to the front. There you go, Spain. Plenty of pushing. Spain leading now. Nope. Danes, they were trying to get around the Danes. Danes say no. Vold's come on the left. It's tight. It's Denmark and Great Britain just off the back of that group. Brave effort to get back to it. And now 
with the constant changes in speed, they're beginning to suffer. Argentina, the white boat in front of them. So Italy and Australia coming into the portage. Combi and Allen and Longwood and Veyers. Aussies, Cuevas and Cole putting in as we take a look at turning around the top turn can. So Denmark, Great Britain back in touch again. Comfortable front four as it has been. I think it's Julian and Martin at the front now, though. That's the Spanish crew who took the early penalty. Tim Muller and Morris Zorluk have been abandoned. The Spaniards, who took that early 15-second penalty for going inside the boy, now lead. Julian and Martin up to the front group and leading on the top of that group. As we look at it, it's Denmark, then Hungary, then Spain, Portugal in the yellow hats, France in the red boat, Norway with all sorts of timing problems just at the moment. On the left side comes Spain. Norway move out to protect that. Everyone moves out, state normal. Argentina in the white boat at the back. The yellow bow of Great Britain just tantalisingly out of shot. There they are. Does they the know what they want. They want to get behind the Hungarians. Here we go. And they bring the South Africans the up way. with them. And it's high speed again. And now it's not. Romagna and Pimento unfussed by all the sabre rattling that's going on around Spanish them. Spanish finally get the best of the Norwegians and come into the side of Romalo and Pimenta. It's quite a stiff breeze out there. Russell and Shaw still at the back, still in touch. Spanish boat either side of Romagno and Pimenta. That red K2 looks low in the water. It's a big wave they're sat on. That nose is low. That's exactly how you'd want it. At one stage they were swerving around that hinted at steering problems or something technical. But they've got that under control. So who's been looking good? Romalo and Pimenta, we haven't seen put a foot wrong. Same goes for Boros and Kolos Vari. 
Lawrenson Plaza. Don't know, looking slightly more vulnerable than they were early days. The Volds, it's kind of vaguely always in contact, not quite in contact. It's always a bit. And always capable of something unconventional, but at the moment they're just tucking in and being very conventional. Russell and Shaw getting a nice long rest. There's two portages to go. Spaniards leading in Portugal and Hungary. The first of those portages is probably two minutes away. Go, you're ambitious for him, Dave. Oh, he's a headwind now. <laughs> but another big and busy portage coming. Wayne Jacobs and Brad Bull clinging on to the back of the sponge. Jose Julian. Here we go. Adrian Martin. The heat came from Pimento and Romaglio this time. I think they're getting a bit frustrated with this big mob that's just cruising. Those Spaniards are holding them well at the front. They're not going to make it. They're not going to make it stick. But yeah, that yeah. was impressive from Julian and Martin. They're going to get squeezed out now Here by the Hungarians. Boris. Boris is so what he did there, he waited until the Spanish had basically shot their bolt, fighting Romalo, and then they went. It's very hard to pick up the pace again, pick up your paddles just after a hard effort. And Boros knows that, and he was straight in there, straight round the edge. Volds and the Argentinians, the one that are suffering, and Great Britain slowly establishing themselves in that group. They won't mind the Volds coming up. That will make their wave even bigger. So there won't be any response from the yellow boat as they come in to the turn and the penultimate portage. Adrian Boros, the Hungarian, has become a really streetwise racer as well. In his early days in the senior ranks, he was definitely guilty of posturing and, and puffing his chest out and achieving very little and destabilizing bunches. <laughs> but he's definitely grown up past that and he's a character to be respected on that bunch. He's very much an opportunist. He times his efforts extremely well. He puts in effort when it's needed and he's lazy when he can be. Four left, two right. Portugal the... first. S Denmark second. Spain just slipped in past them. Spain too, a little bit slow taking the boat out, as were the Volds. Portugal from Spain one, from France, from Hungary, Spain two, Denmark, Norway, Great Britain, and then Argentina. Argentina a bit late to this party. They're in quickly. They get away with Great Britain. And no motivation at the front. The whole group will come back together. Germans running through with Denmark too. With Rask. Interesting to see Romaglio discarding his drinking system and not collecting any new juice. So he's obviously feeling okay. Rask and Hinger away just in front of the Germans. Germans beginning to look a little ragged now. Quite an elaborate wave break on the front of that German boat. Put your lunch on that. Yeah. Expecting a buster to come through here, I think. And all of these boats will be back together. Last full lap. <laughs> It's going to be fairly stressful coming to the next portage. I think we can expect a couple of fairly big rolls of the dice here because anybody wanting to put themselves in a position to win a medal is going to have to seize this one by the scruff of the neck. Boros forcing his way up between 
There go the French on the right. Oof. Shaded by the Portuguese. Denmark coming up on the outside. Denmark stayed clear of a potentially difficult situation then. Boris in the V. Boy, boy, boy. Oof. Denmark looking very well established in this group now. Who's capable of firing a salvo to split this group up here? Portuguese. The French. We still yeah, we haven't seen anything. We, we have. Them. They've kept themselves yeah. in the shadows pretty much. Yeah. Love more and Cook coming through with the Argentinians. Yeah, pretty disconcerted looking Mush Lovemore. Yeah. Looking forward to he's, had a, he's had a tough weekend. I don't think either of these races panned out how he was, how he was hoping. And he's got a man sitting behind him who would follow him over a cliff, do anything for him. Tough competitor. That front group of nine. This is the start of the last full lap. And I honestly didn't expect to see this much traffic at the front at the stage in the race. No. no. It looked like it was down to four, and it looked like that four was quite intent on staying away at one point. But the last few laps have been extremely slow. Book and Saxvig. Less than 5k to go now. <laughs> Bit of miscommunication potentially there. Nearly Could have wrapped the boat around <laughs> the end of the <laughs> did, did, any, did they get a drink? I, I think one of them did. <laughs> Hungarian second crew running through the portage also. So I think we're going to see the Portuguese churning it up into this final portage. Once they get the lead, it's going to be very, very hard to overtake them. So if they can get in first, I think they'll feel relatively safe. I think Boros, his only goal will be to get by the side of the Portuguese. I think he's already worked that one out. I don't think he thinks he can overtake them. So he's going to be by the side of the Portuguese for as much of the time as he can on that final lap. French, nice turn of speed on the French. Spaniards, oh, we've got two in there now. And I think that always that always creates a secondary battle. I think there's always a lot of uh, competition between the Spanish crews. Competition, not necessarily collaboration. Yeah. The Argentinians? No. Not for me. Nine heading to the top. I think Great Britain also, if it comes to a you know, full-on churn-up, yep. might be caught for speed. There are a couple of boats in there that are holders of very privileged backstage passes to the drama that's playing itself out at the front of this race. Ain't going to be on the stage. So 
think it's Julian and Martin leading. Bold to their left. Portuguese to their right. So this is the last time they will go around the top turn can. Last time any boat will go around the top turn can at the front of the race at the Sears Worlds. So at some stage down this journey this back to the portage, we'll see the Portuguese take the lead. And from that point on, I think we won't see them relinquish it. I'm surprised there hasn't been a more definitive group reshaper, a group minimizer. Australia and Italy running through the portage. A little grin from Cuevas. Italy marginally slicker on the put and they get a, a way ahead of the Aussies. Big move coming up the right and this might initiate the move <laughs> the that we've been expecting. Portuguese will have to defend that move on the right. This might trigger. It, it's fizzled out so they're okay. They'll come back across to the Spaniards. Spain 2 will fall into the V there behind the grey boat. So a little flurry on the right. Spain coming all the way across to the left. So Spain positioned well in the V there at the moment. If Romalo goes, all that blue boat from Spain has to do is follow them. Boros is one step further removed. So he's trying to plan out what's going to happen. They must know that Romalo and Pimenta will get to the front at some point it will be a huge tear up when it happens because everybody is going to want to be on their side wash Jose Julian and Adrian Martin still leading this one for Spain they held off Romalo and Pimenta quite effectively for quite a long time last time we had a churn up but I think this one will be for real you get a good picture of who's got power left. And the hurt move must come soon. Just trying to see where they are. Remember, they're coming down to the, the final course. portage. They're hugging the reeds on that right-hand turn, which will bring them into view from our position at the finish. I would imagine, unless anyone forces it from the back of the group, Romalo Pimenta will be happy to wait until they're almost opposite the stands before they take this lead. I think the cages might be rattled by some of the others. Here There's we go. a big it's move Boros. coming up the left. I told you Boros would Hungary. have to be making a plan. And this, everyone's looking at this. Watch Pimenta. Britain are going with him. You've got to get to the left of them. Fairly sharpish. Good move, James Russell. And, ooh, didn't, it didn't come to anything for the Hungarians. That's... That's a problem for Boros. Unless he's going to do another little go in a second that to try and take. He's got a launching pad, I believe. James Russell, come on. <laughs> yes, sir. Squeeze the so Hungarians in. Boros ended up, after all that, exactly where he started. And net he's, gain. he is hating life there. There was no net gain. That's Zero. just a net loss. <coughs> you saw and the pace is slow this is people like didn't take it seriously you could see how little change there was in the rest of the group no one was particularly phased by Boros there they just covered him and hats off to James Russell that was hugely well managed pretty anxious times on that front bunch as you wait for the trigger to be pulled by one of the serious role players Carlos Fari looking a little bit jaded in the back of that boat. They've burned some matches to very little gain. A little bit tight on the right-hand side. Cheapers. They'll get through. Collect some, some samples of reeds on the way through. It's 
So I'm thinking about another 100 metres or so, it's 200 metres until Romalo goes. It won't be long now. You just get the sense of a spaceship sitting on a launch pad and there's a countdown. Couple Only of looks back, couple of looks around. When they get opposite the stand, I think you're going to see that Portuguese boat. A solid push. There we go. Big move coming from the Portuguese. It was a big move. It was an obvious move. And we just want to see really what Boris did about it. And I don't think he's done anything. I think he's got caught for speed at the back. And... Oh, my word. Oh. Spaniards have made contact with the other Spaniards. It's going to be a race for the V now behind Romalo. And there's all sorts of confusion. It's going to be the Danes. The Danes have managed to get into that front V at exactly the right time, thanks to the Spanish infighting. And hats off, Denmark. Bring it on. Beautifully done. Spanish having to come around the side. They'll try and take Vold on. Hopefully, before the, <laughs> no, they're going to run out of time before the turn. Now you've got some angry Spaniards buzzing around like wasps. A heads up move from the Danes there. That V opened up, and it was just who can scramble there the fastest. Wide awake. But there's the Portuguese looking every inch. Winners at the moment. Denmark sitting pretty on the V there. After all they've been through, they deserve a break here. They're going to go out to the right. I think we just went inside. Somebody might have missed the a boy, boy there. With the Spanish oh, crew. my word. Into the portage, Jose Romalho, Fernando Pimenta. They'll be going left as they have done the entire race. That Come red, on. That red boat is close to them. Come on, Denmark. You, after what they've just done, they deserve something out of this. Denmark are out well. And the crowd is really rallying behind them as they Portugal go through the Portugal have got finals. this. There's no doubt about that. France are going to be with them at the exit. The Volds, after everything they've been through, they're there in third place. And Denmark fourth. Denmark just need to maintain some contact with this front group. They're tired. They are tired, man. Dig deep time. Come on, boys. Sorry, Moretti, Philip Knutson. Expectations of a nation on their shoulders, but they're not thinking about that. They've been gifted an opportunity. The Portuguese to won't go hard. They've got time, the, the Danes, to get in the V and have a little break. Here they come now. They'll push into that V behind Portugal. Portugal have no rush. Come on. It's too hard for them. <laughs> it's painful to watch. Portuguese just have to measure their effort. It's so, so easy for them from here. Germans have done well to still be in contention at this stage. Come on, Denmark. They're up there. They've just got it. Why? Don't what? Go, don't, diamond, don't diamond, go diamond. Right. Don't go up the right. <laughs> <laughs> Duck in. Yes, come on. And into the V. Now they've just got to rest and hope that they can get something picked off at the end. There's a medal in the offing here. There's a lot of speed in that. F uh, can we go back it after the finish? Yeah, fair enough. Let's keep our eyes on the ball here. This is the front crew of Jose Romalho and Fernando Pimenta. We are in the business end of this competition. So, Thank you. We'll go back and reconsider what happened to that boy and whatever bearing that has on the result. Let's get that result so first. So Romalo Pimenta are untouchable at this stage. The only mystery here is whether the Danes can stay in touch enough to pick someone off at the end. But I think they're just tired. The Norwegians will fancy their chances. France... <coughs> Round the turn can they come. Danes, they just need to get in there for one minute and then they can try something. I don't know what they can try, but 
I think they are running on pure adrenaline at the moment. No, and there they're going they're right. Going right. They have chosen the high road no, they're for not. this they're one. Coming, they're coming in for the V. They'll run into the V. They've just got to take a break at some point. Oh, well, they're running out of water because we've got 400 meters to the finish of the K2 men's race. They've just got to hope that one of those crews either side opens up enough of a gap for them to squeeze through. Pace is not hot at all as Jose Romalho and Fernando Pimenta are in complete control at the front. And when they go, it will... They're not even going to be forced to go. Both those red boats are waiting. They're waiting to come second. And they know whoever attacks first could fail and come th third. France on the so right. 150 of meters. There goes Norway. Come on, Denmark. Denmark are going big off the back. There goes Portugal. There's a great response from Romano. If the French Pimenta. fall over the back of that wave, Denmark have got a shout. But they're not going to drop off. There's no time. Denmark aren't going to make this. It's going to be France from Norway. Gutsy showing from the Norwegians. But gold is going to go to Jose Romalho and Fernando Pimenta. Second is... France. France. From Norway. A lunge on the line from Norway. And fourth is going to go to Denmark. Well done, Denmark. That is a superb result. From nowhere, from a swim, you remember, at that portage. Correct. And to come forth after that, Boros, I think he overestimated how much power his partner had left. Julian and Spain, Martin Spain, also. Hungary, Argentina. But we may have an adjustment in that because we've got a replay somewhere. James Russell coming across the line now. With Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw, brilliant day. Brilliant. Brilliant race from those two. It didn't look good for them early on, but they pulled it back. Here we go. Watch the blue boat. Hits the boy. Oh. Boy bounces the wrong side. So they're going to be moved back. What, 15 seconds, I guess. So unlucky for them. I don't know where they... Well, they weren't in the medals, to be fair, so... I don't think they'll mind too much whether they get pushed down Max or Hoff not. and Andreas Heilinger finishing in the German boats, along with the second Danish boat of Torben Rusk and Karl Hinge. Then it's the South Africans, Jacobs they've, and They've Paul. slugged it out valiantly here. Backdoor into this competition. Wayne Jacobs, Brad Bull, they were barking with the big dogs for much of the first half of this race. Seem pretty pleased with themselves after that finish. Second GB team of Matt Johnson and Alexander McIntyre. Well, I have to say, I spoke to Carolyn Cooper, the photographer before that race, and she picked those front three. So hats off to Carolyn. You win, Carolyn. That was her front three in that order. Across the line now. Well, coming towards the line at least is Matt Johnson, Alex McIntyre. They took a 15 second penalty. Slightly unclear as to what that was for. And after them, we've got a little opportunity to show the replay again, I think, just to see how that Spanish went. So just to confirm, the blue boat involved was? Um, Lawrence and Plaza. I, keep, I think I've been calling the Lawrence and Miguel all through the race, but hey. No, it's Lawrence Miguel, Lawrence. Miguel, oh, Miguel Lawrence. Miguel Lawrence and Alberto Plaza. Plaza. Yes, please. So confirmation then that uh, Miguel Lawrence and Alberto Plaza have been hit with a 15-second yep. penalty. For the uh, second Spanish boat. So we'll get a second replay on that, I think. Because it was so, so tight. You hit those boys, they can bounce either side of the nose. They come. Love more. Argentina Cook. leading South Africa down to the line. Here it is. Watch the blue boat. Oh. Bang. Oh, no. No, that looks good. That was a different turn, maybe. That must have been the last <laughs> turn.
It did show you a boy that was swimming yeah. around on that wave. So Argentina ahead of South Africa. It's been a tough weekend for Hamish Lovemore. Vagavan and Vaidu. Ahead of Mush Lovemore and Clint Cook. So we're nearly done, Dave. You'll have to get ready for your Viking farewell. Get ready yourself, Internet. There we go. They hit the boy there. It bounces oh. the wrong side. It's they both know it. It's tough, but it's correct. When you hit them head on like that, it does just come down to luck. Which side of the boat they bounce. And that was so, so unlucky for them. They'd had a great race. And I must admit, our team has done a, a magnificent job of getting us replays of all of these incidents from... It has been brilliant. The cameras on the shore and the drones in the sky. I mean, we've had eyeballs everywhere, and it's been really cool. Ivar Buch and Saiva Saksvik for Norway. This is just a heads up to the team managers that the medal ceremony for this event is going to be taking place as speedily as humanly possible. So once you have, I guess the athletes have to be interviewed by Stefan first, and then they will be hustled into their tracksuits and kits and readied for the medal ceremony, which is going to start the bringing down of the curtain on what has been an absolutely brilliant week in Denmark. seeing a gloating photographer at the window. Yeah, here. there's nothing worse than a gloating photographer and there's one right at our window now. You're getting your face Just rubbed in Just trying to it, tell me know. that she pulled the top three before the race. So I think what he has to do is put the Viking kit on now for the camera just to, as a way of penance. Yeah, she did get the top three and uh, she's chosen the penalty and I think <laughs> you might have to put the helmet on, Ivan. It's a bit sweaty for all that. <laughs> well, you're the one who made it sweaty, I think. <laughs> Magical scenes of the little village of Yelts. It'll call itself a city, but it's a, a village in the center of this postcard part of Denmark. Good news is Stefan is down at the finish, and he's got the three men who are at the, sh the three crews who are at the sharp end of the race, or not all of them, most of them. Stefan. He's almost ready, just waiting for a couple more people to come in. And he's got the um, the champs there. Must commend them as commentators for the genius of wearing bright yellow caps. It really does make our job a heck of a lot easier when there's just a mob of boats. There's a shot of them in action. This could be the boy. Bang. Yeah. And it bounces to the wrong it's side. Magic. It's a proper blow for them but that's comfortable at the front so that 15 seconds will be factored into the final makeup of the result sheet so gold and bronze the same as last year so um Standing here with a uh, happy gold medalist you dominated the race all, all the way through uh Jose and Fernando Yes, it was a tough, a tough race uh, with very good athletes, and we tried to manage uh, going the fir uh, first every single portage, and that's our goal because we didn't have any time to train because you always in the sprint team, so it was a really good, good race. So you managed to win this uh, without any training together. Uh, yeah, we uh, with all. I think this this season. Uh, three times, one uh, we do the, the 30k, three weeks before the World Championship in uh, Duisburg, uh, and we feel comfortable with a very good pace alone, training alone. But we just do three things uh, together. But uh, after the sprint uh, time, I I feeling uh, uh, with the potential to to come and uh, fight for medals, and I speak with Ramalho. Take care because. 
I don't have the same volume, same the last year, but uh, right now I'm happy with uh, the, with my teammates and with uh, the guys because I think we do very impressive uh, show to the people. And also, right now I know I have uh, one month to train for marathon ne next season. It's better. <laughs> That's amazing, one month to train for marathon next season. You're both very experienced. Uh, so uh, you will be back next year? Yeah, he's saying yes, so he will train for one month for the marathon, so we'll be here again. Wonderful. Congratulations, José Ramalho and Fernando Pimenta. <laughs> and second, Quentin Urban and, uh, and Jeremy Candy. Congratulations. Thank you. Whew. Finally, we're back on the podium. It feels good. It was a quite uh, interesting race, I, m I must say. Um, what happened after the third lap when everyone uh, came up again? Um, we tried, we tried to, to let them behind us, but uh, they are quite strong, so it's not really easy. And we had to work at, with the four boats like, really strongly. And I think some boats were stronger than, than others. So. Yeah, we, we try what we try what we could, and then we let them come back, and the second race went uh, went on. So you said uh, just before the interview, you're finally back on the podium. What did you mean? We missed the podium last year at the Worlds because a lot of things. So yeah, it was hard to to secure the gold with these two guys. But uh, yeah, we were we had like a wonderful year together. Our K2 uh, is definitely back. Uh, we won the Europeans, won the SEA as well for the second time in a row. <laughs> and yeah, we're back on the world podium, which is the biggest race of the year. So yeah, we're very pleased uh, with that. Yes, especially with the strong field today. Congratulations, France. <laughs> Armand and uh, Avian, what a race. You were... Uh, kind of back off uh, for, for a while. But then, as we have seen many, many times, you came back. <laughs> yeah, we, we were back uh, part of the race, but we, um, we hope that we had a solid group behind there, with especially the Germans. We were counting on uh, Max Hoff, you know, he's a real grinder. So we, we knew that we had a good chance on getting up there again, just not wasting too much energy doing it. But yeah, we, we ended up doing a lot of work ourselves as well but um, yeah we, we felt pretty strong in the in the end but we we didn't quite have the speed as the for these yeah. but you you seem to work quite well together in the second group for a while um, yeah we, we fell off because I think the first lap we almost sank we had so much water in the in, in the boat and we had to empty and, and we fell quite far behind uh, but uh, yeah, we managed to catch up, and uh, <laughs> and the whole leading group uh, slowed down, <laughs> and um, in the end we 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 got some good positions, but unfortunately we we didn't have uh, have the the strength to catch catch up in the end. So, <laughs> so how, how do you how do you set them? How how do you? Manage the mindset, uh, falling back off and then uh, going back. Uh, we have seen that many, many times over the years. Yeah, but we have we have a special trick uh, behind there. There are some. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but there's there's some huge uh, waves behind there, so we can kind of catch each, each one of them, and then we kind of can relax between each each uh, way we work us ourselves over. So. It, it, it looks worse than it is, I think. <laughs> Actually, I haven't commented, but I wanted you to explain. Thanks a lot, and congratulations, Norway! Thanks, Stefan. Opportunity to get some comment from the three crews that uh, Cream came to the top eventually in the closing stages from that big bunch. As much as the crowd was whooping on some of the other boats in that finish straight. Result that fairly reflects the balance of power in K2 racing and world canoeing right now. And worthy world champions.
got Stef Stefan S Stefan chatting with the Danes as well. I'm sure the crowd would love to hear from them. Stefan. So, Philip and Søren, you did a wonderful uh, race uh, this day as well. Fourth position, the worst of them all, someone said, but um, I think uh, you, you feel quite pleased anyway. Yeah, it was a uh, really, really hard race. We uh, fall in the water after the before the first portage and have really, really long way back to the front group. So, to finish fourth, that's Amazing. That's really, really nice. It truly was. You did a marvelous uh, end of the of the race. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we were just, you know, we had nothing left to to shoot because we used all our energy to to catch the group. But that's a risk you got to take. And then, like fourth, is really good when you fell in the water before the first portage. And yeah, a lot of stuff happened in that portage. So uh, we're happy with fourth now. But we, of course, we want to come back next year and do even better. We hope for that. Uh, thanks a lot and congratulations Denmark and you for a great championships here. Thanks. Thanks Stefan. So the the spray settling over Lake Yels as the canoeing action comes to a close. The crowd that has thoroughly enjoyed this week of marathon racing and Sea, sea boat and, and K boat racing now able to take stock of what has been won a great world championship and a great job in hosting put together by the Danish Canoe Federation, the Vian municipality, and the town of Yale. So let's have a look at those results, which will take into effect the time penalty that was affected. So the final makeup of the men's K2 at the end of a great race on the Sunday afternoon. Victory going the way of Portugal, Jose Romalho, Fernando Pimenta. Urban Candy second and Vold and Vold third. One of the performances of the day, Moretti and Knudsen, who came back from that early swim. Julian and Martin came back from their time penalty on the first lap ahead of Boros and Colos Vari. Gary Kachia and Gary Kachia in seventh place. Lawrence and Plaza with an extra 15 seconds added just ahead of Russell and Shaw. Max Hoff, uh, his, his debut marathon, did a good job to come 10th with Andreas Heilinger. Rask and Hinger, there or thereabouts, they seem to have boat problems. It didn't seem to be their day. Wayne Jacobs and Bradley Ball, first of the two South Africans. Max, Matt, Matt, Johnson Matt Johnson and Alex McIntyre from Great Britain, also with a time penalty ahead of a few others before we get to 17th, Book and Saxvik. 18th, Becke and Kulify. Australia's Quavers and Cole, 19th. Comey and Allen in 20th. Longwood and Veyers from Australia, 21st. Japanese lapped into 22nd place. And two, DNFs. well, Lindbergh and Nathal didn't start. And Muller and Zulig DNF'd, did not finish. Superb racing all day today. It's, well, all week, really. There hasn't been a, a dull race this week. And... Uh, and we've been treated to contrasting racing as well. The K1 races just saw these juggernaut solo breakaways. Yep. And this was real cat and mouse, tactically managed marathon racing yep. and the reward going to the team that did that best. Absolutely. Two different ways of doing it. Yesterday, we were looking at superb performances. Today, we were looking at superb race management. And yeah, the Portuguese this afternoon were never never troubled in that race it went so slow for what at least two-thirds of the race was well under speed and uh, that just played into their hands there was no overtaking them on the finish well it's marathon craft taken to an art today by the portuguese and just about time to celebrate our champions so it's been an enjoyable week in denmark it really has it has everything from the eggs to the rumbles to the hot tubs to the canapes, to the axes. To the axes. The hammers. To the weaponry. So It's been hard managing Dave. It's like <laughs> having a child in your house that you don't even know. I have to get him up in the morning. I have to make sure he doesn't drink too much in the evening. It's uh, It's been a nightmare for me. But I think it's been fairly easy for you, hasn't it, Dave? Because I've been managing you quite well all week. It's like a care project for me. <laughs> So, I'm not even going to go there. So, 
that's the start of the men's. I, you've got it on screen outside, I'm guessing. Romalo and Pimenta, so, so good. The amazing thing here is that when this group forms, the front four, the French will come in behind the Portuguese. The Danes will go to their left. And the front four there, after 30 seconds of this race, was the front four at the end. The rest of the landscape changed continually. So it took them a long journey to stay exactly where they were after 30 seconds. Although I think the Danes would have traded third for fourth at the end. But there's your front four. They were the front four at the start. They're the front four at the end. And what a great race we retreated to there. A lot of incident, a lot of stuff happened between there and the finish. Pick me a MVP, most valuable athlete at the end of the week. One performance that really stuck in your mind. Um, Tough question. The two Argentinian juniors for me. I think they're capable of upping straight into the seniors. I think uh, Vergorven in the juniors was was man of the match for me. And I mean, you, you I mean, you could argue it all day, couldn't you? There were so many good performances, but he stood out for me as being operating ahead of his years in both boat speed and race maturity. And I look forward to seeing him a lot in the future. Well, just about time to start winding up the elastic for the medal ceremony. Medal ceremony number, large number and final. Just remains to say, certainly from my side, thanks for the attention through the YouTube days and through the recast days. It's been good having the eyeballs and the enthusiasm of the game. We've welcomed all the comments that have managed to filter their way back to us and we've tried to take them on board as best we can. Um, and Ivan, thanks for your remarkable skill in being able to pick out just who's who when there's absolutely no reasonable sight of a number or a name or a boat colour. You somehow seem to nail it and you make it really easy. I'll just make it up, Dave, to be fair. Convinces it's me. Uh, <laughs> if, if there are people still listening out there and watching on the platforms, then please send messages in where we can improve. We, we do try and do our best, but we know we're, we're pretty weak in some areas. So please send us hopefully constructive criticism but we are all up for that the sooner we get that the better you've got our individual names it's dave mcleod ivan lawler that's for the commentary team and you can send to the icf if you want anything done on their part but uh certainly open to constructive suggestions from everyone listening today thanks for your time thanks for your attention and we will hand over very shortly to the medal ceremony. Dave's just gone upstairs to uh, be master of ceremonies, a job he's done very ably all week. Okay. A minute or two until that ceremony starts. Just arguing over who's going to do the presentating presentation rather as we get treated to a replay of the finish of the final race. Tough on the Danes, great for Portuguese. It's very hard to see a way of beating that Portuguese boat at the moment.
Not sure what the delay is out there. I think everyone's ready for the ceremony. There's a lot of people wearing suits who don't normally wear suits at the moment. Looking slightly uncomfortable in them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you, Tuck. We've really appreciated your support. The final medal ceremony will get underway shortly, and that will be followed by the award for the uh, top nation, and then the closing ceremony, all of which is going to be well worth attending and being part of. So we appreciate you staying where you are and uh, being around to enjoy the closing formalities.
like he's just like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just and you can just say that you were put into it. Um So ladies and gentlemen, we are now just moments away from the final medal ceremony. The Top Nation Award and the brief closing ceremony. Look forward to you being part of those formalities. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the medalists in the men's K2. These medals will be presented by Ruth Heitzler, board member of the International Canoe Federation, and he will be assisted by Rui Cancio from Team Portugal. The bronze medal, representing Norway, John Vold and Ivan Vold. The silver medal representing France, Quentin Urban and Jeremy Candy. The gold medals and the world champions. 
representing Portugal, Jose Ramalho Fernando Pimenta. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Portugal. Congratulations to our medalists. And a big thank you to the local musicians who contributed the unique lure to the medal ceremony here over the weekend. Congratulations to the uh, men's K2 medal winners. Please stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. There's a brief closing ceremony and the very important matter at hand of the presentation of the Nations Cup. Once again, thanks everybody for your support. We really have appreciated your attendance and your enthusiasm. It's contributed a great deal to this event. Please stay with us as we commence the closing ceremony and the presentation of the Nations Cup.
Ladies and gentlemen, on the podium, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to Tim Cornish of the ICF Canoe Marathon Committee. He will have the task of presenting the Nations Cup Award. Decided on points from performances throughout the competition, this year's Nations Cup was decided by one point. The award for the top performing nation at this year's event, Spain! And now, a round of applause for our champion nation in the Nations Cup, Spain. The completion of the medal table at the end of this year's tournament in fifth place was Denmark on 98 points, fourth place was France on 101, third place was Australia 119, second place was Hungary on 193, and the winning nation Spain 194. Congratulations to Spain. Thanks to Tim Cornish for officiating in the final awards function.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our closing ceremony. On the stage at the moment, the mayor of the municipality of Vian, Frank Schmidt Hansen, Tom Bunnison Farshu, the president of the Danish Canoe Federation, Niels Bendixson, who is the representative of 2024's host event, and of course, Ruth Heiselaar, the chairman of the, Slalom, uh, of the Marathon Committee and board member of the International Canoe Federation. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Ruth Heiselaar, ICF Board of Directors. We will begin with the presentation of gifts. The first of those gifts will be presented by Ruth Heiselaar to the Vian Municipality Representative, the Mayor, Frank Schmidt Hansen. The next gift will be presented by Ruth Heiselaar to the president of the host federation, Tom Bundesen Farsho. Then a gift on behalf of the International Federation to Niels Bendixson, representing the Yelts Local Council. It is now my pleasure to ask Ruth Heiselaar to make a short speech. Dear Danish friends, well done and thank you. We have seen this week paddlers competing on a high level in this World Championships here in Vaya, in Jels also. <laughs> We have seen a fantastic organization, and we know to organize this event kind of a race is not easy. Without the support of the city of Fire, thanks Mayor Frank Smith Hansen, Danish Canoe Federation, and the support and assistance from the people here in Yales, it was not possible. I should like to thank particularly the Danish national officials and volunteers for their excellent work. At least, we have admired your brilliant performance, and you are the ones who make this World Championships best ever. I suppose everybody agrees with that. <laughs> Hope to see you in Brandenburg, Germany next year, beginning of June, for the first World Cup, or third week of September for the World Championships Metkovic in Croatia. Thank you. Thank you, Ruud Heisler. Now, my great pleasure to invite to make a brief speech the mayor of the municipality of Vian, Frank Schmidt Hansen. Thank you. And here you see a happy and proud and very satisfied mayor. It has been a fantastic week. I hope you, Athletic, have enjoyed it and are satisfied with your results. You have given it all, and that is really all anyone can do. I hope everyone has enjoyed the many activities as well as the races. A lot of people have helped making a truly spectacular event. Thank you to all the volunteers who have created, created side events and help, uh, help with all the planning and execution. It takes a lot to pull 
of an event like this. We could not have done it without you. Also, a big thank to ICF, Ruth, and all our partners in the organization's committee. I hope you have had an amazing experience here in Yels. I thank you for coming, and maybe, who knows, we will see you again. I will wish you a safe journey back home. Thank you. Our thanks to His Worship the Mayor. The third speech will come on behalf of the Danish Canoe Federation. I present their president, Tom Bundesen Farsho. Thank you. I will go, I will do it a little short. Uh, I will thank the Vejle, uh, Vejen Kommune, Sport Event Denmark, Event Trekhanten, Sports Center Denmark and the ICF for world-class marathon world championships here in Vejen and Yels. Special thanks to all the ITOs and the volunteers for working hard over yeah, nearly two and a half weeks now. And uh, for a lot of volunteers, it's not stopped now. Now they have to work another week to uh, put all the things back and uh, prepare the next world championships that we will have in Denmark in 2027 in Silkeborg. Hopefully, we will see all of you again. Have a safe trip home. And, uh, yeah, see you in 2027. Thank you, Tom. The next important formality is the lowering of the ICF flag. So, ladies and gentlemen, Ruth Heiselaar has now handed the flag to the organizers of the next World Championships that will take place in Croatia one year from now. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings to an end the closing ceremony of the 2023 ICF Canoe Marathon World Championships. It's now my great pleasure to invite the organizers of this event in Croatia in, 20, in next year to present a brief speech. On behalf of all the organizing community in Metković in Croatia and of course uh, our town, I would like to welcome you in our beautiful country, Croatia, and into a beautiful town which is divided, but also connected with an emerald river called Neretva, and I hope to see you there all next year. Thank you very much. And so the spotlight shifts to Croatia for 2024. And that formally ends the formalities at the end of this year's ICF Canoe Marathon World Championships. Thank you to the dignitaries that have taken part. And ladies and gentlemen, to each and every one of you, thank you for your support. Please enjoy the rest of your evening in Yels.